Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the state of, of Sierra Leone. I want to welcome these two gentlemen by my side. To my right is Mr. James Cisse. JCC, how are you, sir? Thank you very much, Mr. Camara. Mr. Camara. Uh, yes, um, I'm very pleased to be here. It's an honor to have you. Yeah. And to my left, I have Mr. Bangura. Tonka Bangura, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Yeah, uh, Mr. Yisa Kamara, it's a pleasure too from my side. Um, welcome to be us across the world, especially in Sierra Leone. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, before we go into any, any, you know, situation that we have at hand, let me just advise uh, the viewers, please feel free to call in via Skype, via landline, the number to call is 0207-274-2699. And also the Skype is ATV Base, B-A-S-E, 4567 at Outlook.com. Now, <clears throat> before we go into it, our main concern is what's going on in Sierra Leone. We have a crisis at hand. Our brothers and sisters are in need of our help. And I have these two gentlemen that are going to expand onto it, what we can do, what our intentions are, and what it is that is going on at base. Now, also, we are going to discuss the financial aspect of Sierra Leone. So not just that we're going to focus on the health aspect, we're also going to focus on the economic aspect. Mr. Sisse, can you please tell our audiences all over the world about yourself, please? Well, um, I, my background is legal. I have a legal background, um, but I'm working for a different project at the moment in London. Uh, I'm also providing legal advice to uh, my community group in Sierra Leone which is campaigning for the restoration of the district headquarters of Kaina District to Batkanu, away from Kamakwe. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Mr. Bungura, can you please tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, well, uh, equally so. I'm also, um, I have a legal background, double masters in law, expertise in criminal law, um, but I'm a politician. A politician and a former presidential aspirant for All People's Congress 2017 major elections. Um, yes, well, I'm a regular visitor here. Normally, it's called national issues, one of them for tonight. Um, so, I'll be happy to hit the ground running and for me to offer my expertise as a politician to the panel. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. A little bit of background about me psychology is my doorstep. But being that I'm a motivational speaker, I'm an advocate for the youths, but mainly a supporter of the human rights. And I feel as though what is going on in Sierra Leone is something, as Mr. Bangura said, we have to hit the floor running. Absolutely. Gentlemen, I have a series of questions, and these are generalized questions. And upon answering the questions, depending on your feedback, I will follow up on that, depending on your responses. Now, I've done my research on it, and thank God the coronavirus did not hit us the way it's hit in other countries, and I'm so blessed to say that, because to our research, it's about 10 people so far in Sierra Leone that have the coronavirus. Now, how prepared was Sierra Leone for this combat of coronavirus? How prepared were we? Because it's hit so many different countries before it hit Sierra Leone. Mm. That ha should have given us ample time to prepare. 
how prepared are we at base currently? I'll, I'll leave that question for the politician to, uh, to well, start off with that. How prepared are we is a fair question. But let's look at this question holistically. Looking at it financially, health area, socially, and as, as citizens, we've had the Ebola. So from there, I would say, at least we have back to one of the most dangerous epidemic in the world, Ebola. So um, I won't say people are always ready to, to combat another virus, but at least we've, 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 we are acquainted with the nitty gritty how to fight a virus. So from there, at least, it is not like a new something to educate again the people of Sierra Leone how to prepare ourselves to confront this epidemic. And especially so, the heat was not at the beginning of this crisis. So at least we've seen countries around, around the world struggling. So that area, I would think, I would say the mindset, people will listen because they've seen the dangers of Ebola. So I think they will listen to the precautionary measures for them to under, undertake to prevent the spread of the disease. That's one area. Look at the health sector. If the UK is struggling, one of the world's purpose is struggling in, health, in, in the health sector. Even to get the, the personal protection equipment on time, it was hard for them. So if they, as a, as a, a very powerful country, would have been financially powerful, they are struggling, Sierra Leone should not be an, 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 an exemption. Our health sector had have had double shock. I've been mean, during the, the civil war, even though it's, it's a long time ago, but still because it, the, the the damage that was caused is still having an effect in the country. So we still have to discuss about it. So we have the mouse slide and we have the Ebola. So that time our our health sector was crippled. But again, it taught us a lesson to build to build our health sector. Have we done that perfectly to confront this, this I mean, crisis? I'm not sure. Because to have an effective health sector, it needed investment. Have we had that investment into the health sector? I'm not sure because I'm not privy to some of these I mean, I mean, policies. But I will tell you that our health sector is not prepared to fight short I mean, global crises. And But for the time being, the measures in place are helping. Because the the social distancing is helping to mitigate the spread of the, 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 the virus. That's one. That's very the, the, the education part of it is helping, and the quarantine. They've quarantined over two hundred people. That one again is helping to contain the virus. Because when Ebola came, we had no idea how it can spread. It can spread from people to people, from 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 ear to ear, from cough. We don't know because we are naive to fight shots crisis but now we've known how to the ABCD to do to mitigate the spread of short disease so in that area I think I say well it's a blessing in disguise because at least we are now I'm not saying sure other prepared but at least we are aware of the ABCD to, to, to be done to mitigate the scale of, of the spread of the disease financially we are struggling okay Sierra Leone we are, we, are, we are going through recession. Even in Africa, we are struggling financially. We've been so, going through this recession for yeah, too so many years. That is, I'm, I'm not sure I'm prepared. Financially, we are, we are not prepared. Politically, the, the political will is there. They have seen the president coming out, Minister of Health, civil, civil society, I mean, local organization, the mayor, politicians. They are coming out, educating people about the impact of this virus. And that's what we should do at the moment. Thank you. Yeah, if I should add to that, I think. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, no, no one was prepared for this. No one was expecting this. This is a new thing, you know. So, uh, but the fact that we've had 10 cases now in our country, you know, and no deaths so far, means that, I mean, well, I, I think we, we knew it, it was coming to us. You know, the government took the steps to, you know, to introduce measures straight away in case we were to get the first um, recorded cases in country. So what the government did was to, you know, uh, uh, s introduce a state of emergency, you know, restrict the movements of people in the border areas, you know, close all the borders, and then they've actually promoting um, the messages of 
uh, social distancing, uh, general hygiene, and other, other, other things, you know. There was a, a temporary three days lockdown uh, to educate the people just to be uh, aware about what is happening. And now we have a 14 day lockdown and a, a nationwide curfew starting today, I think. Um, so all of those things, I think they are, you know, measures in place to make sure that, you know, uh, we mitigate um, the spread of the disease in the communities. Thank you, Mr. Sisse. I'm a hacker, so I'm coming to you. <laughs> and I'll be back to you, Mr. Sisse. Absolutely, yep. I'm, I'm fired up. <laughs> now, as we are quite aware, yeah. each thread is different. Don't you think, as a government, as soon as you knew this is hitting these countries, policies should be put in place and risk assessment should have already been at hand? Absolutely, correct. Absolutely. So I sincerely feel as though there are no risk assessments put in place. And I have proof. If anyone think that I don't have proof, please call us. Call us. I have my team, we do our research. There were policies put in place, no risk assessments. There are people on wheelchairs, nothing put in place for them. Can you expand on that being that you stated? Yeah, um, well, this is what I'm always saying. As a government, as citizens, one thing we should always have with us is being proactive. Being proactive is one way to address issues. Uh, the feasibility studies, but well, probably they ha probably they are using the template for oh Ebola. I'm not making excuses here of the Ebola, how the Ebola was battled. Probably they, they, they are using that. But well, again, look at the, the, the gap, the years from 2015 to 20, it's about five years. So the, the dynamics have changed. Correct. They've they've changed. So that's something that should have been a must thing they would have done. What part of it is the, the, the border that process. should have been a learning experience. Absolutely, the border process should be what part of the 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 the, the risk assessment. And it's good you highlight, you highlighted this issue. There are nurses and doctors, they, they are threatening them to go to work. Because they say, listen, we haven't got the, the personal equipment, even the salary, is, they, are, they, they, are, they are worried. But some of them, they are threatening that if they don't, please, anyone can challenge them to, to call this, 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 this issue. If they don't go to work, they are, they are going to withdraw their, their, their pain. Yeah. Well, also, but yeah. also, you can, you can, as you can, a doctor yeah. in the medical field, yeah. you took an oath. Absolutely. I'm not trying to defend the government, what they're doing, but being that you are in the medical field as a doctor, a nurse, or whatever, you took an oath. Yep, and that's another, that's, but that's a duty of care on the government to protect those doctors. Yeah, and then I took an oath. I've seen the military, they took an oath to go to the battlefield, but they, they refused because if you know their lives have been in danger, based on government policy, they will even survive. So as the nurses, it, the government has a duty of care to protect them. If they haven't got the necessary equipment to fight the crisis, which is not made by them, this is a global crisis, Sierra Leone is a developing country, we are crippling. So if they Indeed. ask for the basic amenities for them to be used to fight this disease, I think we should take their, their issues very, their welfare very, very seriously. They, 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 they have a point. I'm not really condoning them, but they have a point. They are we are we as politicians, we should honor our duty to protect our nurses, doctors, and all those within the health sector fighting this crisis. I absolutely agree with you on Thank that you. one, yeah. Mr. Sisse. Yep. You stated about well, not to quote you, but isolation and so forth. Now, as a government. The internet in Sierra Leone is quite bad. If I'm going to put this and I'm putting the police out there to enforce this, what are they doing to protect them? Because it's easy to say everybody's on lockdown. There are some people that can't afford food. There are some people that depend on, let me say this is my brother. I depend on my brother. But I can no longer go to see him. What is the government doing? I, I have to say, you know, I'm not too sure about um, what Mr. Tunkla is saying when he said that um, 
you know, people who have been forced to do yes. things that they're no, no they, okay, they, they, you know, because if they don't go to work, they will talk, they will delay their things. Uh, I start to be corrected. Well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 ju I just want to make that point. Uh, you know, I just want to raise that. Um, yeah. But um, as far as um, the vulnerable in the society are concerned and the government's uh, efforts to help them in this crisis uh, is concerned, I am not a spokesman for the government. Well, because but, basically, um, since but, but, you but, stated about the yes. isolation, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, but, the borders. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So but but, but, but I, I, I think they are doing something to address that. Unfortunately, Sierra Leone is not like um, the UK. You know, yeah, it's not a welfare. Yeah, it's not. It, it's not a welfare state. Mm. You know, we do not have the resources to look after the vulnerable in our society. Really? Um, you that, feel that, that way? Well, uh, that has always been the case. That is why we have so many um, um, people. You can see them living in abject poverty in, in, in the country. I mean, the meager resources which are there are usually diverted to other programs, but. Um, uh, and that would leave, you know, the vulnerable um, in a difficult situation. But I think, um, given the situation now, um, I think the government is doing something to try and address some of those issues. Yeah, um, I beg to differ. It's something, I wrote an article two weeks before, before this crisis hit us. And my, my last program here, I stated it. I know we are not a welfare state. I said, still, we, are, we have a duty. The president of Sierra Leone took an oath of office. That is so. And that oath must be honored. We can't look after everyone in Sierra Leone. It's not possible. Even if that's it's not possible. We have, we have um, uh, children living in, in, I mean, in, 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 in I mean, homes. We are in, somebody are even sleeping in the streets. I bet everybody that these children in the streets, we should use the military and the police to take them, use the national stadium, or any schools, put them there, look after them until after this crisis. We have um, uh, children living in um, uh, homes. I have to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recall, recall, recall it. Penthouse. Yes. Basically. These children, we have these this homes where they are caring for them. Some of them, they live, in, they live on donation. So the government, at least throughout this period, they should look after these vulnerable children, feed them until after the crisis. And again, we should engage, we should engage the, the civil society. There are some millionaires in Sierra Leone, they wanted to adopt children, but they are not aware about these homes. Some of them, they, they, they are willing to help, but we need to, we need to bring this issue to the national domain. Probably we have a millionaire that, that is a philanthropist. Okay, I'm going to adopt these children, 10, 10 20 of them, I'll look after them. If the government can do it, but let the government use the civil society to highlight the challenges of the children, to help them. Look at all people. You, you yes, to bring to bring in the lockdown is good. Is that is one of the, the measures? Even in the UK here, we are in partial lockdown. It's the measure, but there are provisions for me to get, get access to food. If those guys that are locked down, children, those are those guys, they are access to food. That would trigger a problem. Within a problem. So that that big the question about the food people taking advantage of this crisis, traders. If now the bag of rice costs three hundred thousand, they will go to three fifty four hundred thousand. They are making they are, they are taking advantage of the situation. I wrote an article and I said this on the last program. Government should bring in even okay. What about you guys? A food shortage in Kailau. How can we get food there? We should use the military, the police van vehicles. They are logistics to, to, to take food there. People to get access to food. You cannot lock people down. This is lucky that it's like a house arrest. You don't have to go out, but you have food to eat. Of course. But, but let, 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 me, let me explain absolutely. this. Well, let me explain this very clearly. I think it is not a lockdown, per se. <laughs> it's a partial lockdown. Yeah, but I mean, there is still movement of yeah, people. There, there is no restriction on movement no, no, of people. Is, it, is, so there, it is, because there, there I've is, seen there, videos there is, where the police there, there is, and the army are actually beating <laughs> Exactly. Well, we, you can put plates, eh? Yeah, yeah we, I, I can understand. I think those incidences we are isolated yeah, incidences they, they were isolated. You, you you cannot you cannot um, well even in the uk with our corona uh, restrictions see, uh, regulations uh, beating, beating uh, well, 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 well there's there's still misunderstanding as to how they go on about implementing yeah, or that's, enforcing that's some true. of these rules well, so well, what well, i'm trying to say in in sierra leone in the case of what happened um during the last couple of days um 
some of those incidences, as far as I'm concerned, I think are isolated cases. But that uh, the vast majority um, of uh, 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 the situation, you cannot, uh, you know, say uh, there's an adverse effect um, um, to the human rights of people. Abs absolutely. You know, but of the citizens, honestly. Going, I mean, the, the incident at Manticourt, it nearly created a fight between the police and, it, and citizens. It nearly created a, a confrontation between, between, between the police and those that we are policing. Right? So, these are the issues. And I, I, I wrote this article prior to the crisis hit Sierra that the police should not be heavy handed. Because if these people are hungry and you are beating them, you are provoking a situation. Yeah, again, it yes. is, it is, so, it is, hope, it is a misunderstanding. I, I, hope, I hope it's an isolated issue. Well, that's, that's, okay, that's, my, that's my belief. That's my <laughs> okay, let's don't go into a debate. <laughs> but the mere fact is that our people are in need of help. Of course, we know that. Our objective is to find solutions. Because I cannot sit and watch the demise of my people. Yeah. We need to come up with ideas. And now majority of these questions that I ask is just to see the awareness of our country. Now, I know we cannot answer every question. I know we cannot be precise. And I know we say we do our researches because we're all full of papers here. <laughs> <laughs> but the mere fact is that I just need to get a better understanding. The vulnerable, the disability, individual, disabled, the homeless, the elderly, those are all fitting in the same category as the vulnerable. Yeah. How are we able to help them during this crisis, during this pandemic? Yes. Um to be fair to the government, I saw a video clip going around in the last week that they are giving food to the physical challenge, giving them some stuff. Um, but I don't know how comprehensive is that gesture. Is it only happening in Freetown? We have rural areas. So we, don't, we can't just centralize our gesture within this capital city. We should actually spread our, our wings across the country because the country is built by one leader. And that leader owes a lot to those that is, is actually leading. So let's look at Kono, Kailau, Kerema, Bo, Poloko, Makini, Kambia, Kabala. Are they getting similar help? We have people that there are a lot of people there who are also vulnerable. Some are, some are, some are homeless. They are sleeping on the streets. Are we looking after them? Okay, again, so let's narrow down to the economy. Are we financially capable to, to actually use money to help them? We are struggling economically, that's a fact. But so, this every little helps. That this just to and IMF and World Bank, they've given fund to fight this crisis. How we, what I recommended last week here, I said Parliament should have a role in distributing this fund. Sierra is west, south, north, and east. If Parliament have a committee of accountability, we have hundred millions of dollars or twenty million, two million, three million, whatever the, the money is. Let's look at the most vulnerable areas who try to help, try to send help there. Absolutely. Right? Are they doing it? No, so far I have not seen it. And this is something that I recommended that let's get Parliament involved. We don't want to get Parliament involved to proclaim the state of health public emergency. Let's get Parliament involved for them to hold this government accountable, for them to actually be able to create checks and balances, able to distribute this crisis fund that has been given to the government, not for personal use, but for, for to fight the crisis. Part of fighting this crisis is fighting hunger. Because if, the, if somebody is hungry and coming across uh, uh, the, the virus, the person will die. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a weapon to keep someone hungry. Yeah, might, yeah. see, so, therefore, if, if there's any policy in place to seek the welfare of poor people in Sierra Leone, I haven't seen it yet. Well, I, I think government is working with international partners to address some of these issues but this is still a difficult issue in the country i should say yeah, to the plan. yeah so um i think the question will be like uh, what can we do i think that is what mr kamara is asking yeah. what do we do 
as citizens or friends of Sierra Leone yeah. to help cushion the difficulty of the disadvantage as citizens uh, yes. and, friends and friends of Sierra Leone. Of Sierra Leone. Yes. So you, each and every one yeah. of you, we consider you as a friend. Yeah. We consider you to reach out to us yeah. Yeah. and well, help. Yeah, because the difficulty is, um, like I say, you know, our budget is still, I think, donor financed to some extent. Absolutely. Uh, so that um, it is always going to be difficult for government to distribute resources to you know relevant um, ministries well, that's, that's and agencies. We have to we have to be sure about what we're saying but before we. Well, I'm quite there. sure about yeah. that as well. Yeah. That one, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, Gentlemen, <laughs> please, someone challenge me. Yeah, the one's there. <laughs> it, what I'm trying to say is that we have to be sure about these things because I'm sure, I'm sure we, we, the there. we were not prepared for this. We, with this thing, we, no one was thinking that this was going to happen in the country. I, I'm not sure about Everyone an emergency phone. It was That's going to phone. happen because it dead. started in China, in which yeah. indeed I think China should be held in world court for this because mm. they started this and this should be a crime. Well, if that's the case, we should also hold Congo. You gentlemen are lawyers. We should, we should also hold Congo, Congo Kishasa, mm. liable for, for the Ebola. Mm. We should be consistent here in applying international law. The Ebola started from Congo, it's still there. So we should also hold them responsible for Ebola. Right? And we should also hold. We have a call coming in. Thank you for calling the state of Sierra Leone. Hello, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. This is really, we really need this for um, the masses, you know. So my only take here is regarding the, well, I'll highlight a little bit on the public health sector. And because um, I saw a post this morning <coughs> where they said two um, corona patients, you know, fled three times, you know, and went to the protest. Thank you so much for your call. Now, as far as the, uh, you know, health-wise, I'm not too sure how equipped Sierra Leone is with the medical aspect, the equipment to test people. So, a friend of mine named Bobson have built a hospital in Sierra Leone where he sent equipment straight from the UK and London, America there but again it's about educating the people if we're not able to educate the people how can we lead them gentlemen yeah, yeah well I, I think what 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 she's the caller is trying to say there is we, there has to be some um policies in place to you know to discourage people from doing things like this i think she's gone now we've lost that caller yeah. she's oh, well. she's no, yeah. it's, it's not about the policy. It's policy implementation. Yeah, but the policy is like a cloud. It's there. Yeah. But how can they implement to stop that those people to run away from the hospital to, to the rural areas? Oh, can I just finish? Yeah, go on. Yeah, but what, what the government is trying to do, I think they would do, is um, they will be guided by the legislation, the 1960 legislation, um, um, to put a system in place because by, by Section 34 of the 1960 Health Public Law Act, um, 
it gives the president the power to bring in legislation to spread, to, I mean, to prevent the spread of the disease. So I'm sure they will be looking at things like this. And now, remember, we have um, a state of emergency uh, uh, um, so that um, there's going to be, I'm pretty sure the government will put a system in place to address some of these things. The, the, government, okay. uh, the, government, had, the government had the weapon to actually implement its policies. I'm not, I'm not sure we need to bring in new policies because it's there already. It's Just there. to take them, to use them. One of the things that we need to do is education reassuring people that don't worry the stigma because people are scared oh i'm going to die yeah you go, go coronavirus you go to die yeah but that's, i think that's the that's the mindset yeah but so, i think the government is doing well in propagating the message well, sending yeah, the message to people there's a lot of education we have, programs we have two, on radio two, two patients to run away so yes that is, that is still a, a vacuum to cover yeah. so that let me let me just highlight this issue when we should have a designated hospital to have this patient that have coronavirus. I think the president has mentioned that in one of yes, his press statements, that, that press releases. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But how comes if they, are, they were there, how comes we will run away from the hospital to rural areas? I think I right. saw so that. that policy, I think that I saw, policy, is it working? I think, no, the policy is, mm. what we have now is a yeah. state of emergency. Yeah, but we have... We but have, uh, then, again, yeah. under the public um, health ordinance 1960, yeah. section 34 gives the, pal the president the power to bring in legislation like what we have here now yep. uh, for restriction, the but coronavirus even, restriction even, order. Even parliament, parliament, they have an agreement parliament to bring in policies to address this crisis. That's, that's not the issue. The issue here, we have a designated hospital where all corona I mean, patients that have been diagnosed positive should be protected and quarantined. That's, that's the point she's trying to highlight. Uh, we should have them protected because look, the, 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 the spread of this virus is personal contact. So how many, how many, how many people, how many citizens, those two patients have contacted on their, on their, on their I mean, way going to where they're And going? also, let's also put in play that mm -hmm. Sierra Leone is overpopulated. Absolutely. And also, um, it's not, it's a lot of milk going on in Sierra Leone, trash everywhere. <laughs> so with this being said, if I'm in a hospital, for this virus and I can escape. You can escape, Chips. That's a lot. Yeah, but I think I think we need to understand where, where the caller was coming from. I, I'm not sure she said the uh, these people actually run away from an hospital environment. Well how would they know that? Well, I, think, don't, I think I think how, how would they know their well, if they don't diagnose in the hospital, where, where are they it, it may be that they were like uh, contacts, you know, uh, they were identified by contact tracers, no, you know. No. Maybe they have contacted yeah, someone who was... No, just, I'm not having this. I'm not, I'm not having this. I, I, no, 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 no. She's a patient, she's a patient, not contact patient. She said, no, 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 I'm trying to say, two patients. No, this, the, the, are you this, 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 this is a place I think I saw, I think I saw... two think patients I, no, run yeah, away, I not two suspected. No, I think I saw a posting uh -huh. from Umar Fofana, the BBC correspondent in Freetown, which says two people who were tested positive so they you know they but they were not in a hospital environment at the yeah. time but well, well, if I, you are being tested yes. positive why should positive. i let you go home yes. i yes. think yes. that the, you are you defending the undefensible no 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 what, what? I mean, excuse me i'm coming I, I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not gonna allow you to to, to get out more than these patients have been diagnosed those that were not diagnosed they were in the airplane with some of these guys that were that had the virus they quarantined for 16 days. They are no patients. They are just like we have this. We are sitting in the here. midst of it. Yes, 16 days they were in the, in, the, in, the, in the hotel. So what about those two that have been diagnosed? These are patients, potential super spreader of the disease. They, they, they run away. That's negligent. Well, we need to understand this thing very clearly. I think we need to understand it very clearly. I, I am pretty sure yeah. these people were not. In a hospital environment. So we so I, I so, think they so were they I were in they so were in I ice. find out that you I have the virus. I I'm gonna know that you go home. How can I diagnose my eyes? Let me see go by us. I can't diagnose my eyes. From what you I read through, you go through medical tests. Yeah. From, from what I read, uh -huh. I understood them to be two lecturers who were isolating in Frobe College. Yeah. And then when the results came back and they found that they were tested and then when the results came back and they were informed that they were positive. 
then they got scared and then you know they ran away they ran away and later when, on when they, now, they came back again now that there comes the negligence because those two I mean, they, they, were, they, were, they said they were not lecturers. They were just like, I mean, they are like... Common citizens. No, they were like members of the campus. That they were staying there. They were, no, they were not like lecturers, right? So, what about those citizens that were suspected? We took them to hotels or other houses to, to be quarantined. So, why are we selectively select, enforcing these policies? Even if they, are, they were lecturers, they should have taken them to an isolated area. So, they, are we being selective? Well, that's what I'm saying. It. Because in, in South Korea, South Korea, even if someone that got coronavirus came to this room, don't even follow it, they will trace all of us, they will, they will trace us and quarantine us immediately. So those two lecturers, we should not treat them differently to other, to other, to other citizens. We should give them the same treatment that would apply across the board. If they were suspect of coronavirus, the government is under a duty of care to, 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 to quarantine them to protect the larger public, true or false? That's true. Fantastic. So, Jeff, now let's say this, this is this is an utter negligence. It is. Well, I do not have all of the facts in front well, of me facts. to say, but all I'm <laughs> saying, I'm yes, just I'm just making yes, my yes, comment. You know, I'm just making my comments this, based this, on this, what this, I read word, yes. from the posting this is from Umar Rufufan at the BBC issue. correspondent this, in Freetown. May May I, yeah, gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just point out social media can sometimes create a havoc. Yeah. Sometimes social media can create an issue or make something big than it already is. There's a lot of false information going out there. Please be cautious as to what you put out. Make sure it's factual before you forward it to the next person or the next person. Because if I forward it to this gentleman and he's in fear, He's going to forward it to the next person, and that's how false information is spread. Spreading. Let's make sure if somebody sent you something, somebody sent me something from America saying, look at the coronavirus, look how bad it is. I sat down, I looked at the article, and some of the spelling was wrong. <laughs> so how can this be factual coming from somewhere of you know professionalism? So let's make sure that we try to think out of the box, not just react to things. Again, the number is 0207-274-2699. Call in, please share your concerns, ask your questions, and we will be more than happy to go into it. Gentlemen? Yep. Um, yes, again, you know, I think there's a lot people um, in Sierra Leone and abroad and our friends could do to help you know the vulnerable in our society honestly because um, it is not an easy thing to um, address the problems of the less privileged in our country uh, like I said you know our budget is part of it is donor financed honestly and um, because of all the challenges uh, in the country, uh, it is making it very difficult for the government to be able to address some of these issues. So that is why I think it is very, very important for friends yes. of Sierra Leone yes. and, and, and good Sierra Leoneans to come yes. on board and help. Yes. Yes. The, the government can be on a platform of affecting change immediately. They told us 2017 that they were going to sort out the economy issue call it bread and butter, immediately they took over office. This was one of their one of their flashy promise that they're gonna transform the economy like never seen before. They're gonna change the, the, the abject poverty and the struggling masses. Immediately they, they took over office. This was said this, this, this is a record. So if two years now we are still complaining, I think there's something wrong. Either they misled people or there's a level of incompetency. I understood that there's a, that there are problems of economic recession across the world. That is fact. But let me just place let me just church somewhere. The activities of government sometimes affect us to to to, go to bring the dividend as a form of revenue to feed the government to able to implement policies. One of them, you cannot bite your finger, your finger that feeds you. Uh, let me give a classic example. The SL mine in Losa, Marapa, is one of the the booming area that was feeding government revenue. Employment 
was working in, 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 in the township. They were paying taxes. Everything was fine. When they came, they stopped it. This was a binding contract. Who, who stopped it? The, the, this current government. Are you sure? I'm not about sure. The case is in court at the moment. I'm telling you, they, they terminated the contract. SL Mining, check it. If you have no, you so why was it stopped? Why was it stopped? They said they, they, they don't like the terms of the contract. Why don't you renegotiate the terms to suit you as a government? They can keep still mining, paying taxes. They renegotiate. Let me tell you what happened now. But, but before, listen, let me just ask you a simple question. You're saying they terminated yes. the contract with yes. the... Is it, the, is it African mining? No, no, no. African mining has uh, been different one? In, in a lot of states. Okay. This African mining has been bought by SL Mining. Right, okay. No, African mining was bought by Shandong. Shandong sold their shares to SL Mining. Yeah. Right? Hold on. So, so, so the government now stopped the this contract? Government, this government terminated the contract. Said. What was the state of the right. economy at the time and before the termination of that contract? Well, we, I, just, I just highlighted earlier, we had a double shock of the economy. If you check the IMF projection 2012, yep. 2014, Sierra Leone had the fastest growth economy. We had a boom. The fastest growth economy. Hold on, gentlemen. Yes. Thank you for calling in. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Bobson Kabia. How are you, Bobson? I'm great, thanks. I'm very happy for this program. Thank you very much for having this sort of program to help educate our people. Uh, personally, I think my question is how prepared is Sierra Leone for this coronavirus? I heard you talking about um, <coughs> treatment centers and all those things. Um, are we really prepared from the time we had of the virus? What did we really do as a nation in terms of preparedness? Personally, I say for now, people are scared or overwhelmed of the disease. What I feel the, the response team should do in Sierra Leone is to educate people like we did during the Ebola. There are, we do um, TV adverts explaining to people, telling people that yes, the importance of reporting themselves at an early stage, you know, saying that you know, when you feel ill, rush to the hospital, get tested. It's not that everybody that gets ill is going to die. If you report yourself early, the chances of survival is very, very great. Unlike when you decide to keep it on your home, Th thank you, Mr. Kabia. Th thank you. Mr. Kabia, thank you and I have met. And, <laughs> and also, this was the first discussion, first question we started with. And free time was ready. And just to just go back, you are the gentleman with the hospital in Sierra Leone. Yes. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I will let this gentleman expand onto your question before I come in. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Kappa, thanks for calling. Um, yeah, the question is very fair and timely. Um, are we prepared as a country to battle this, this crisis? <laughs> if, if UK is not prepared, so Sierra Leone is, we, are, we, we, we haven't got the, the capacity to, to combat this virus. But plain and simple. Are, are we prepared financially? No. Are we prepared in terms of education to educate our masses? Um, well, uh, the government tried in that area because they brought in some precautionary measures to actually try to mitigate the problem. Actually, fair to them, one of them is quarantine. Second, um, I mean, hand washing, um, social distancing. These are some of the pre measures that they brought in that helped a little bit. But at least we saw the crisis, the virus going around. In fact, we were sandwiched by two countries, our neighbor Guinea and Liberia. They had it for a very long time before it came to Sierra Leone. At least, yes, we should have actually beef up our health sector, beef up our borders, beef up other areas that would have needed to be sorted out. Well, that area, I'm not sure because we still had cross-border activities in the night, even when we had the first case. So that area, we are, that's what I can see as a shortfall. But the, the other measure they brought in, we should actually give them a pat on the back that year. They brought this, 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 this measure to help the quarantine, the quarantine a lot of people in, 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 in hotels, notwithstanding some of those people that complain that they had nothing, had not, nothing much to eat. They were struggling. Some of them they were complaining. Some said they were living in a at this fear decent place. So I had mixed mixed messages coming across across, across me and social media that I saw. So in terms of preparedness, 
our health sector has been tested badly by the Ebola. Are we still prepared? I'm not sure. Well, it, it, just to add to that, Mr. Kabia, uh, I think the government is trying to do their best to um, create awareness uh, among the citizenry, like they did um, during the Ebola crisis in 2014. Yeah. I, I think you'll be aware that there is a presidential task force which has been set up to address these issues. And I think that task force is um, spearheading the education campaign with international partners, WHO, the Ministry of Health, um, WFP, um, to I mean, to cushion the difficulties with the food security arrangements. I, I think they are doing their best, and I'm sure uh, the citizenry are getting the message. And uh, hopefully, I'm pretty sure uh, that in as much as we do not seem to have the, you know, the health uh, capacity in our country, but um, um, the government would have learned a lot from the lessons of the Ebola outbreak in 2014. Thank you, gentlemen. So, can I, can I find out, please? Are we prepared politically? No, we're not. Um, given that the, the president has failed to take along other political parties with him, to find this crisis. So that, that's an area the government should try to address because he cannot find this battle alone. Let's look at Escobar's example during the Ebola. He brought, he gave even Mr. Bongo, yes. I love you, <laughs> but we cannot go into that. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you very much. I'm just but, um, okay, Mr. Kabe, let me just say. And how do you know this? Um, because I spoke to the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Health directly. I know because those ventilators, I am the one that introduced them in the country in the first place. Are those the same ones that you have in your hospital? That's right, yes. Well done, well done, okay. well done, well done. Well done. All right, Mr. Kabia. Well, I was going to add on to that in reference to ventilators and, and so forth, but you beat me to the punch. So I thank you for calling in. Um, you know, please, I'm continue to. We know that we, that is always going to be a difficulty, Mr. Kabia. But I'm pretty sure once the equipments are there, um, the authorities will take the appropriate steps to make sure that you know people get the appropriate training to use the equipment when needed. You see, what I'm afraid of is that when this equipment get there, the poor will not have access Absolutely. to this. Absolutely, it's not going to be accessible to them. But the rich that have the money to throw around, well, definitely that will be at their beck and call. Well, that would that call that a fair? Would you that call that a fair? That would be the test case for the government. As I said, they are selective, select the selective of implementing these measures. If they are going to be selective in giving ventilators to only the rich rather than the poor, I'll be very surprised if that would be the case, no, but I don't think that would be the case. Sure. Because what it is, is with this crisis, I think there are designated places where, you know, well, suspected um, individuals should be, yeah. um, where this is equipment will be installed. So yeah, I'm sure well, they will be used for everyone. Two patients have escaped. Don't forget, don't forget. We're we, we here, they are back. They've been... They, they are they, back. They, yeah, I had, yeah, I had their back. Yes, there was... There was um, there was a I hope so. No, yeah, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. so well, thank you, Mr. Kabia, for calling. Thank you, Mr. Kabia, for your call. Well, you know, the scariest thing about our country is not the fact that we don't care about human life. We do. But the scariest thing is the fact that money talks. Yep. If you don't have the money, 
and you depending on family that are overseas to support you on your well-being, your you know daily living, food. When you get sick, how during this epidemic, this crisis, I think you're going to fade away, expire, as it's in the medical field. You will expire because I'm afraid that the government is not equipped. Well, you you're right. I mean, the, the, the question about inequality is all over the place. Even in the UK, I mean, uh, very recently, I think the governments have asked all the uh, local Sick. authorities to make sure that uh, the homeless people are housed during this lockdown that we're experiencing. But that notwithstanding, you still see there are so many people no. who are sleeping rough still. Oh, we did. Not, notwithstanding we did. the fact that the government have requested all um, local authorities well, to make sure that well, these people are housed. we stepped into that. Majority of the homeless that are out there are the ones that chose to be. Some of them have been put into housing and they still leave. Well, the trouble is, because you, you, there are so many issues surrounding homelessness. Some people, you know, they have mental issues. Precisely. You know, and, and it could be the same with Sierra Leone, you know. But the difficulty in Sierra Leone is the fact that the difficulty in Sierra Leone is the fact that uh, it is not, uh, uh, you know, a welfare state. The government cannot step in easily and look after people like they would do in England. Um, so that is the difficulty. So that is why I think, I mean, the question you put earlier to see what we think we can do, you know, as citizens or friends, you know, that is where that comes in because even international partners, you know, they can only do what, you know, they can do to provide, you know, assistance to the government and then the government will have to channel resources to the different departments. It's always going to be a challenge. So you see. That is true, but the government has a duty of care. You don't think so? I think if the government sees something is not right, it's for them to correct. And also in Africa, being that if people call you crazy, if you have a, a disability, a learning disability or something. So instead of trying to get you the proper help, you are left to roam the street. To my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, there, there is this stigma about, you know, disability, you know, in, in certain societies. Well, even in the Western world, honestly, you know, well, in the Western kids world, get bullied, get you know. Well, in the Western world, and, you know, it, meant to be taken care of. Yeah, the, the situation is worse in our country. Um, so I think, you know, the, the relevant ministry, I think Ministry of Social Welfare, whatever they call it, I can't remember the exact name, um, they do have systems in place to address some of these things. But there is always going to be a challenge because of the limited resources uh, which the state uh, has and, and the, you know, the task that they have at hand to address some of this, uh, these issues. So what do you propose that we can do at this current state and time that we can help our people, being that we are here abroad. How can we help? How can we get involved? Now that's coming to the economic side of it. Being that we're focusing right now on the health aspect. Now let's start focusing on the economic side of it. How can we help? Well, it is, it is a valid question. The difficulty here with the citizenry, in, I mean, Sierra Leoneans living here I mean, we know what is happening now here. I mean, the economic impact of the lockdown, the uncertainty surrounding job security of people. So, but that notwithstanding, I think we should be asking ourselves, you know, some of us, I mean, we are lucky enough to be here we have jobs, you know, um, we have friends we can approach, you know, institutions you can talk to, to see how best they can step in involved. to help, you know, Sierra Leone, you know, um, address this uh, issue post corona, right. you know, because there's going to be issues, you know, um, which are going to be very serious. You now, know, social issues, you know, economic issues, 
uh, which is going to impact seriously okay. on the disadvantage in our community. Okay. Now, we are here in the UK. We have vast ways of getting the help that we need. My question is, how can we help our fellow countrymen and women in Sierra Leone? Because a lot of people refuse to help because they don't trust the government to say, I will send this money and it's going to be used properly. I can send it to this organization. It's going to be utilized properly. How can we say we can do something? Well, I think Salonians living abroad um, can form groups you know, um, here abroad, and even um, groups in Sierra Leone, which they can work with directly, instead of, you know, channeling whatever efforts people intend to give um, to support, you know, or alleviate poverty. Instead of directing them to government institutions, you can actually deal with a local organization so directly not, from not, the not UK or elsewhere. I think that is an excellent idea. I personally think that's an excellent idea because I have an organization that I'm currently dealing with. It's, um, it's formed by Samalina Kure. She's in America. It's called Global Poverty Reduction Initiative Organization, where they're sending so many masks, foods to our fellow countrymen in Sierra Leone. It's time for us to reach out. I'm not saying don't depend on the government. Definitely not. But all I can say is that we need to start supporting each other. Because if we're not able to support each other and depending on Jack and Bob or um, and Fatima and Otina and him, it's not going to happen. Make we depend upon we safe. We don't suffer, Boku. Africa has suffered for too many years, too long. We need to stand together. We un to unify. We need to come together. Me saying, oh, you are Mendy, I don't like you. Oh, you, oh, you, you from, no. One thing I've learned working with the Jewish organization, they have a unity front. Now, me being in that organization, I learned that they're not all together. But when they come forth, they come forth together. Africa, Sierra Leone, we are not developing. We have so many minerals, natural resources, we are not utilizing, we're not importing and exporting. I'm waiting for this man to come in my country to come and take my food, utilize it properly, and then take it back to his country and make money out of it. And when in actuality, I get nothing. He gave me a hundred dollars and he's making a million dollars now. We need to wake up. Can I say something? Um, yeah, because I was sorry anyway. I'm sorry, viewers. I had some <laughs> technical issue. Uh, the issue of, uh, as I mean, looking at like national interest, I mean, motives, uh, national interest initiatives. Let's don't just look at what we diasporans or any other citizens can have to can do. The government also has set in policies we cannot focus no, on the no, government no no let, let me come we cannot depend no, let on me the come. government so like if we have like personal protection equipment eh, or any other stuff to fight the crisis who want to ship it to Sierra Leone P it should be tax free oh yes that's what I'm coming from it should be tax free if if we are actually sending cargo or through freight it should be tax free it should be under humanitarian um concept so this is the way the government should help to attract help in the country. And we as citizens, we are under obligation 
from a humanitarian point of view to help. That's what in my last program I was encouraging people to set up teams. We don't need to send the money straight to the government. We have nurses who are poorly paid. We have doctors. We have cleaners. We have all those on the front line fighting this crisis that are struggling financially. We can collect money and help them. We can do it. It's something that I said last week when I had this program. I was encouraging people to do that. What have I done? I don't like to disclose <laughs> my, my generosity, but we are collecting money to help from a certain area in Sierra Leone to help them educate, buy non essential stuff to help our people. That is part of the jigsaw puzzle. If I help, you help, he help, she helped. That's how we are fixing the jigsaw puzzle. And the government should come in and make it public that all those humanitarian stuff coming from across the world to help our, to help our country, our citizens, must be tax-free. That's my point. I am in agreement with that. Thank you. Well, I think, I think there's a point there, but um, the thing is, though, um, I'm pretty sure there is a system in place that would allow yes, people to be No, I mean, there's a system. But if, if there's no, there no system in place should bring it down. for that, the, yeah. the point is, though, yeah. I mean, if I should send a container yeah. full of medical equipment yes. as Jusu, yeah. you know, Free. Uh, it, no tax. It could, it could be a difficult. There could be a difficulty there. No, 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 no. Tax weaver. End of tax weaver. End of story. No, please let him explain. But, but without, without, without having a proper organization set up in Sierra Leone or a proper organization set up in the UK, it's a donation to the know, government. For, for, so to do that kind of thing, unless if you're donating to the government, that's a different story. Absolutely. But if you're just sending it, like you know, I'm sending it to the people of. Yeah, of, of course. If I, if I have things, evidence, you know. if I have evidence, it should be free. It, it can be a tricky thing. No, you so can't. That's why I think. Okay, there has so to be hypothetically, if you're donating to the government, say we are in the UK and we gather money and we purchase all this equipment that is needed and we decide to ship it to the government. That's a different situation. That's a donation directly to the to government go. of Sierra Leone. But that's what he's trying to say. I, I don't think that you would have difficulties if you are making direct donations to the government of Sierra Leone. What about a donation to the community in, uh, in term, in, as part of fighting this crisis? I, I'm not too sure, but there might be a difficulty if you do not operate as a properly uh, constituted organization. James, this is a, you know, this is a I crisis. I think that, that could be... Sam Luna's organization that, is... That could be a difficulty. But like in the case of Global Poverty Reduction Initiative Organization, mm -hmm. that's a well-established organization. So if you are to direct any donations um, to promote the initiative, you know, the cause in Sierra Leone, I don't well. think you will have difficulties with that because there is an established um, organization already for that purpose. Should I agree or disagree with you? No, well, I think because uh, well, uh, it's entirely up to you. But no, I think no, if you me, have, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Given that this crisis, there's no time to go through uh, the, the the government procedure to register an NGO or charitable organization at this point in time. In as much as this, I mean, this I mean, cargo has been checked, it is full of medical equipment. For the purpose to fight this crisis, it should be tax weavered. That's that's my argument, and that should be an argument of anyone trying to help that country. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. As long as I, this, I, it has I, been checked, I, this is the, for the purpose is for this community to help fight combat this 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 crisis. I think the government should actually be able to embrace I, that. I don't think the government will put any barriers into things like this if they are to receive donations you from sure? abroad. Uh -huh. You know, from you know people, organizations who. It, uh, going to help them. Well, also, I don't think they put. Up, up also, the scary that. thing is that when you ship a cargo in Sierra Leone, having to go through the process of retrieving it, mm. the level of steps you have to go through, it's a, it's a, it's a mayhem. It's a deterrent. Yeah. It's a deterrent. Big deterrent. Well, that, that could be another topic another for another day, honestly. <laughs> but I think what, what we should be focusing on is how we could come together and help you know, our country and our communities through well, organizations yeah, such as Global like Poverty the government Reduction is, The government in Sierra Leone, they've opened an account encouraging stakeholders, NGOs, civil society, philanthropists to pay money into their accounts. 
again, I have, I, I, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that in yeah. terms of accountability. Yeah. I see because uh, given that I know what is going on, we are closing leakages, but we are open sinkholes or drainages. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm questioning that because if you pride yourself on fighting accountability, but you don't have to be held accountable, that's a joke. That's a joke. For me, it's a joke. If you are, you, you are holding me accountable, but in so doing, in terms of holding me accountable, you are breaking the law and you don't want me to hold you accountable. That's, that's just, a, that's the big I one. personally <laughs> think that a leader should be held that's a joke. responsible that's a joke. for the action of their members. Absolutely. In my company, in my companies, each individual that I associate with, that is involved with me, knows anything. I'm involved in everything. You come into my business, you see me mapping the floor, you see me fixing tea for him, and you think he's the owner of the company. Yeah. I get involved. So being a leader don't mean I should step back and get comfortable because people are looking at me she and front my line. company. So I have to be at the front line. Absolutely. I have to be there. I have to present my company. What is our leader doing to show this? I am not a spokesman for the government. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I say, but I have to no, say, say <laughs> but I have to say, I have to say, as far no, as a general question. No, no, I agree, I agree. Yeah, well, as, I far, as far as the the campaign to fight against the coronavirus is concerned, mm. I think President Bill is taking the lead on that. Really? Yes, is is doing uh, daily press briefings about daily know, press briefings. Yeah, he's to, I th well, I if, to if, not, if not daily, but weekly uh, press uh, briefings. Because it's regular, you know, it's regular uh -huh, briefings to the public to know what pe what is happening. So. I think we should give him credit for that. No, I, no, I'm challenging him because, you know, and I think the steps he has taken so far, as far as I'm concerned, yes. in as much as James, in I've, as much as people mm -hmm. call me Jusu, the Jusu, <laughs> Jusu, I've acknowledged. <laughs> so I've, I've, I've so, acknowledged. Yes, yeah, so in in as much as you know, there are few issues, you know, with them, uh, the way they were, uh, the, the the you know the law enforcement agencies were going about to enforce the rules mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the uh, restrictions and the uh, uh, the curfew, I, I think we should give credit uh, James, to, to the I've, leadership. I've the given country. credit already, but that's a partial credit. Given that, no, I have to be fair here. I'm not, this is about making a political point. I'm, I'm seeking my country's interest. One thing about a, a leadership to fight this level of crisis, you need to have the capacity, the competency, right the courage to pull the country together you cannot fight a crisis like this in a in a segmented way you can't do that you can in a segmented way but what is your uh, let me uh, no, no but well, let me finish my you, point you are dragging me into a political <laughs> discussion no 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 i know no, 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 no. this was not going to we are not going to go into that arena yeah, i really do not want but to no no i'm not, I'm not dragging you this is what i'm saying this is what i'm saying but let, me, let me just okay. make my, let you me just make my, my question no, you very, have let, let, me, let me just make a very simple question allow me to learn because you seem to be making the point that you know other political parties are not being encouraged to come and help yes. the government. Fight. Yeah, that's the point. This is a national but national. What, are you, what, time, what, what is your party planning to well, do? Well, hold on, please. No, 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 Maybe you can do that for another next for another gentlemen. Yes, gentlemen. No, Elisa, be fair to me as well. I am very fair to you, Mr. Bokoro. It's just to say. Yeah. Please stop rocking the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yes. let's just say this. Oh, Me personally, mm -hmm. I think it's not a matter of parties. You know, it's not a matter of, you know, it's just it's just a matter of coming together that we can move forward. Now, we what we are going to do, mm -hmm. me personally, I'm going to give some money. I'm going to give some money to a point where I want Sierra Leone. I'm not biased. We are very intelligent people. We have doctors, nurses, so many people in the medical field. I am willing to send doctors to Sierra Leone. In there will be 
Unisa Camara at unisacamara.com and I will buy your ticket. We need to fight this. We need to stand by our people. It's not a matter of depending on this party, that party, this government, that part, that government. It's a matter of unity. It's a matter of moving forward. It's a matter of security of our people. Now, Amaze TV has a charity organization and we will be doing a fundraising also to help Sierra Leone. Amaze Television will be doing a fundraising to help Sierra Leone. I beg of you, it can be your mama, your papa de ton, your uncle, your family, de, anybody, they might need your help and you are not able to be there. You need to say you can go there and you will get the treatment that you need. We are sinking and we cannot afford to sink because every time we get hit Ebola, the you know the flooding mm. we always suffer and it's hard for us to get back up mm. we are losing our brothers and sisters what can we do gentlemen what can we do well it is a good thing thank you very much mr camera for that wonderful oh. offer, offer to be able to help with the cost of tickets for those who will be happy to Please answer to the call again like you did la the last time in 2014 during the Ebola outbreak for my part and my organization which I'm representing in the UK which is uh, the Libisi Gown Descendants Association uh, based in Sierra Leone we are currently embarking on agricultural activities in, uh, in the community now that uh, the coronavirus is in Sierra Leone, we know there are going to be challenges with regard to food security after this whole thing is, you know, um, over. So we are putting funds together to support local farmers in our communities That's to be idea. able to address issues about food security. That's a good idea. So we will call on you know well wishes um, to come on board and support the cause which amaze and mr kamara will be um, campaigning for well um for my part as i said earlier um we've held um numerous meetings in sierra leone here and they've given us a bill that my community have given us a bill that this is what they wanted for them to not only buy non essential items for people but to educate them given that they have to go there because it's not only that the government will reach and it's not only us a tv or radio so they are going there engaging people telling them about social distancing in local dialect giving them what they needed to wash their hands to direct them to help them to even probably even supply them medication until we see this thing the back of this I mean, this crisis that's what we're going to do and james i mean just to highlight one area the consequence of this crisis in terms of mental distress in terms of financial poverty social isolation these are areas we should be looking now the aftermath what we're going to do as citizens and the government to address it's very important i'm happy you said that thank you very much very important because, so go ahead. My, my generosity is not stopping for all this crisis hmm. But I don't like to <laughs> to disclose my. Generosity. I will be giving <laughs> Mr. Bangura my account details. Listen. And you people know when you used to say something, he yes. will be giving my account uh, details. Yes, really. so, <laughs> now, so, James, I'm sorry. I mean, I want us to discuss the aftermath of post coronavirus, trauma. the trauma, the the isolation, the 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 how can I call it, the stigma poverty hunger because we don't know how long this will take it's a huge uncertainty this is going to interrupt farming yeah it's going to interrupt a lot of a lot of issues how are we are going to address it as governments at the top that will trickle down to we the citizens how are we going to address this, this crisis post coronavirus that's my point in it. excellent my <clears throat> excuse me gentlemen 
Um, I have this program here in the UK, which you did to me psychologically. It's like I believe it's the breadwinner of everything. If your mental being is strong, it's nothing that the body cannot achieve. Yeah, absolutely. So, what Shirell in America and I are going to do, we're going to do an entrepreneur program for the aftermath of this, where we're going to help the youths become entrepreneurs. We're going to basically get them to be what they want and we're going to give them the tools that they need and it don't matter if we have to try to get them visas to travel as long as they're able to go back mm. and do what it is that is required of them mm. because we need to empower these young youth absolutely these are our leaders of tomorrow yep so if you don't we don't work with them how can we move forward I also have psychologists, Vani and David, and David is my co-host on the show, no. and they're ready to go to Sierra Leone. Okay. Psychologists, we are going to mentor our youths, our elderly, everybody. This is a trauma. It is. It is a trauma. We need to get them back onto their feet. Bobston have the hospital that we can also utilize. I know that sometimes I've spoken to Bobson, yeah. yeah. But me being your niece, sir, I yeah. be, I will be knocking on that Absolutely. door. <laughs> Absolutely. He's a, he's a nice guy. He will help. Yeah. yeah. So we need to get that hospital, the second hospital running, mm -hmm. so we can do this. Gentlemen, we have to do something. On the financial aspect of things, because we're churching on the health aspect, mm -hmm. but we can only do or say so much. Yep. Yep. What can we really do that will make a difference right now? Well, if I can answer that question quickly before Jusu. Um, I actually campaigned last week here because people are nervous about passing money to government. If that's the case, we have, a, we have other channels. Then I decided to talk about the nurses, doctors, and all those medical practitioners, including the cleaners that are part of this team fighting this crisis. Raising money purposely for them. It's not going through no channel from the, from the horse's mouth to the recipients. From us to them. We can't help all the nurses in Sierra Leone, but we should target hospitals where the coronavirus patients are. This is where is the, is the hot area. Those doctors, cleaners, and including even patients, some of them, they're poor. They can even after the stage, they have nothing to eat at home. We can also target them. Raise money across the, across the world by, by groups. Whatever little helps. Of course. Whatever little helps. Then this money should be taken direct, directly to these nurses, doctors, patients, and even cleaners. That's the least we can do to help. That's what my, 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 my suggestion. That's how I see it. Mr. Cissé? Well, I think there's, um, there's this call from the government which says um, people must wear mask in public mm. um, effective i think um, as soon as possible you know so and i, I know there's a drive back <laughs> home you yes. know with local materials being used to you know yeah. do do these things so maybe a few pounds and dollars here and there yeah. we'll you know some cottons. could help yeah, buy some cottons. you know um, local communities you know with you know we have our local you know tell us who can do that you know and then that will be cost effective yeah because they're doing know. it in china india yeah. Mm. yeah and so forth and yeah. also i have a cousin in poland billy who's creating them and shipping to Sierra Leone. yeah so, yeah. so, so, we, so that's something we can do i that's, think yeah, that's, that's affordable that's reasonable it is, it is, it is. you fact, know because you are, we know you are empowering local 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 knowledge yeah and, and, and plus helping you know the frontline workers, workers you know, yeah. and, and the general population absolutely but i have a problem with this max my only problem i have that i think we need to discuss if you have a let me one max for that you are sneezing it coughing on it is that the way you actually i mean compound yourself with virus that's another part of the education we should educate the masses that you cannot you can have a max like this local cutting or you can wash it 
because they wash it and even wash your hands. And even so another area, I think, you know, this native soap, black soap, mm. it's good. It's like an antibiotic. You can use it. Somebody says, oh, you wash your hands. Not only your hands, even wash your body. <laughs> Not only your hands. Wash your hands, but keep washing daily because it's the way you are getting rid of the virus. Wash your hands. Don't touch your nose, your mouth, your ears. But don't forget to, to be hygiene friendly. Wash yourself. Clean yourself. This local soap. I'm, 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 sometimes I use it here. This black soap. Or this, this, it's, it's, it's pure like it's like an antiseptic. You can use it. It's a way, if you can't afford to buy um, this um, uh, English soap, use the local soap to wash your hands. It's a way, as long as you can wash your hands, because these hands, like my hands sweat. It got a lot of, so I have to wash it daily, regularly, even prior, before this, this, this crisis. I have to wash it when I'm praying, I have to wash my hands. So it's very important, the hygiene. And this max, how long will you have it? You keep wearing it every day, every day, don't wash it. That's the way you accompany yourself with viruses and a potential patient to coronavirus. So that's how to be done. The government should actually expand the system of education. Another place I love just I like one education, the real education. We have schools have closed. Children from poor backgrounds cannot afford private tutorials. What can we do as a country, as a government, to help them? to educate them across the country. I think the government is, is working together with international partners, WFP and, mm -hmm. and other agencies yeah. who are providing like radio programs and then radio. And I, have a, I have a relative yeah. who was actually a family member who was actually very much involved into that okay. during the Ebola outbreak. So yeah, that was the same, yeah. I think they're doing the same Thank now. you. I Thank think you. that's excellent. Gentlemen, the show is coming to an end, but you very informative. Thank, Thank you, you both. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We have the radio stations in Sierra Leone. We have the TV. We have the phones. Yes, I know I made fun about the internet in Sierra Leone, but we can also educate via radio. We can also educate via internet to yeah. the phones. Yeah. We can also educate via television. Let's be consistent in trying to help our brothers and sisters on how to keep their safety well, their well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, we can only say or do but so much and the rest is up to you. We will be running a, f a fundraising at this station. Friends, family, listen, your color don't really matter to me. Where you're from don't matter to me, but we all bleed the same and we all feel the same pain. So let's reach out and try to help each other. Gentlemen, before we close, is there anything you want to say? Please put out your websites. Yeah, well, um, me, I'm, I'm always, I'm always on I'm social media. Um, that's where I propagate my, my, my expertise. <laughs> People know me as Tokla, so I'm all over the place on social media. Um, the only thing, even though I mean, Mr. Jusu don't want me to highlight it, President Bio, you cannot fight this battle alone. <laughs> this is a national battle, it's a national crisis, it's a global crisis. We have different expertise. Some are lawyers, some are politicians, some are doctors, some are business people, but they have their two cents ideas to help fight the battle. President Kuruma, former President Kuruma in 2014, brought in the opposition and gave money to President, current President Bio to, to educate our people across the southeast of, of Sierra Leone, even the north. He went across the country with funds given from the government to him as a leader of opposition. So I'm, I'm asking him, I'm begging him as a leader to solo his pride, reach out to the opposition as a leader. That's part of leadership. For, for you to have the capacity to reach out to the opposition based on national interest. I rest so far. Let me just say, President Bayo, I know there's a lot of turmoil. Personally, I look at you as a man, a great man. I respect you, but your country needs you. I think it's time for you to step up. I'm not going to say you're doing bad. I'm not going to say you're doing good. I'm not to criticize. All I can say is that the world is watching you. Being Creole, Timini, Mende, whatever should not matter. Being APC or whatever don't matter. I think it's time for us to unite. Absolutely. Mr. CC, before we end the show. Yeah, well, I just wish to say to the government, uh, 
of, of Sierra Leone. I, I think what you are doing now is entirely uh, the right thing. I think what you are doing uh, is in line with um, the guidelines from WHO. And so I think you should continue to do the good work and I will urge citizens to listen to the guidelines which have been issued by the government to follow the simple instructions. Once you earn, cover your face and your nose. If you're doing a bus or poda poda, you feel to say, you feel for cough. If you not get tissue, cough now you close like a throat, cover you something. Not cough pan people, not pit na public. Stay away na crowded places. We don't learn the lessons from the Ebola. We all lost family members. This time round, let we listen to what in Papa government they say to we. Let we avoid the unnecessary waka waka. Let we stay safe. And we wish we all a happy Easter. Well, I thank you, gentlemen. Um, as we come to the closing of it, I just want to give my condolences to a lot of people that we have lost during this time. I want to applaud all the medical team that is out there on the ground doing what they can do. Um, when I say medical, psychological team, um, the firefighters, the police, um, all over the world and just know that we're always praying for you. We're always thinking of you. May God continue to be with each and every one of you. May Allah continue to guide us through mm -hmm. these hard times. I know this is not a prayer session, but our hearts are with you. Sula Leon, you are our hearts. We love you. We will always continue to stand by you. You are sweet mama Africa and you are the Lion Mountain. You will continue to roar, and nothing will ever bring you down. As long as your children are here in this world, we shall always be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, and good night. Thank you. Thank you for watching. No Thank you for yeah. watching. Thank you. Thank you.